Welcome back. At the age of 14, our next guest was an elite gymnast on track to represent Canada at the 2012 Olympic Games. But after a life-altering accident that left her paralyzed, those dreams were derailed. And with 75,000 followers on TikTok, almost 12,000 on Instagram, and a viral response video to Candace Owens, she is leading the fight for disability access. Here to share her story is social media influencer and accessibility advocate, Taylor Lindsay Noel. <laughs> Today, we're, we're truly honored to have you on the show. Can we start at the beginning? As, as we mentioned, you're, you're 14 years old. You're training to be in the 2012 Olympics to represent yes. Canada. And then you have an accident. Can you tell us what happened? Of course. So I started gymnastics at the age of five. And it was everything I love to do and more. And at 11 years old, it very quickly became a job, though, because I joined the national team. Wow. And that meant... I got to represent Canada, and I was very bright hopeful for the 2012 Olympics. When I was 14, I went to a regular day of training, and my coach, who had been my coach for years, approached me to do a skill I had never heard of before. I expressed my concerns, but he gaslit me into trying it, and the second attempt, I landed headfirst, broke my neck, and severed my spinal cord. And I found out after the fact that the skill has never been done before by anyone in the world, oh. and he lied about it. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you know, you completely took that situation and you transformed it, and you transitioned yeah. to this incredible new career path. You're an entrepreneur, you're also fighting for accessibility rights, but you say that included also a process of grieving. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think when people think of grieving, they think of a death of a loved one, or, you know, a death of a pet. Mm -hmm. But grieving can also be the death of your former self. Mm -hmm. And I had to grieve Taylor the gymnast, and I had to grieve Taylor the athlete. And all of the future plans I had for myself, put that to bed, acknowledge it, and then find ways to move forward because I'm never going to be that mm -hmm. version of myself again, but I still have a really full life left to live, and I'm going to try my best to... Write it to the wheels fall off, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> One of the ways we're doing that is to share a lot of great accessibility videos online, um, ranging from restaurant reviews yeah. to where else you're going. So what, what motivated you to use the platform in this way? COVID was one of the main pushers for that. I was so waiting to go back out and be with my friends. But we would always talk about, when we go back out, we got to go back to this restaurant or this restaurant. And we could only come up with three. And when we really broke that down, it was because those were the only three that we knew to be uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want to go through the hassle of finding a new place. And we realized that's wrong. That's not how it's supposed to be. And... The idea to start documenting that process came out to show people what accessibility really looks like because people tend to gravitate more towards video than just writing. Mm -hmm. And it bloomed into something so much bigger than I could have ever imagined. And now I also share what an accessible life can look like through what I do in my job as an owner of a company and as well as being, you know, a reviewer. And people love it. People keep coming back for more and more. And you also post uh, frequently about fashion and makeup, something that's, that's important to, to a lot of us. Uh, talk to us about some of the challenges you face when it comes to those departments. Well, I love makeup and, and I'm getting into loving fashion. But with makeup, I would never be able to hold the tools properly. But I have found adaptive tools or just little hacks that I felt like could help somebody else. Something as simple as weaving a brush in between my fingers huh. in order to put on my lip liner. Or with fashion, I always had a really toxic relationship with it because when you're an athlete, your body is skinny and tight and everything just fits properly. Mm -hmm. But now in a seated position, I didn't really know what to wear or how I should style myself. And I'm about to be 30. And so I got Shiel, my stylist over there. Ah. Is she? <laughs> oh my God. She is absolutely phenomenal because she's helping me to embrace the inner work that I've done for mm. so long and really present it on the outside. And I think I think she's doing a pretty yeah. good job. Yeah. Yeah. You look fabulous. Thank you so 
so much. So recently you uh, posted a response to a video that Candace Owens put yes. up online. She was criticizing Kim Kardashian's Skims adaptive clothing line. Let's take a look. He's in a wheelchair, He's in a wheelchair, and it says Skims made for everybody. That's all I'm gonna say is really, I don't, I don't really understand how far we're gonna take this inclusivity thing. I really don't get it. I don't know, and if I'm wrong, again, educate me. Say I just wanna be educated in the comments. Hi, Candace. My name is Taylor. I am a full-time wheelchair user, and since you are asking to be educated, here I am. Happy to educate. Everything you just said is completely ableist, and here's why. So, I mean, you went on to just school her, and I understand. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> that she has since apologized, I don't know if wow. directly to you, but what, what prompted you to, to make this video and then what's been the response since? Well, when I first saw the video, I thought it had to have been a uh, edit because it was egregious for someone to say this inclusivity thing has gone too far, especially being a black woman in America on TV. Mm -hmm. Without inclusivity, she would not be in the position that she is. And so I did my research to make sure that I watched the full video and she did say what she said with her full chest, so I couldn't help but stick up for my community. And although I was nervous because her audience can be very polarizing, I knew that what I was saying was right and that I needed to say something. And I'm very happy that the response has been overwhelming, millions of views and just a really positive response. And even some of her followers saying, hey, you know what? I used to support her, but this has gone too far. It's amazing that you have. Know. When we talk about inclusivity, it's about making making sure that all stories are represented. Absolutely. So part of your story is your dating life, which you have shared on your TikTok channel. You've talked about dating with a disability. So yeah. what what has that been like for you? What are some of the challenges with when you're dating? I, well, I think like any millennial, you know, it's a little bit rough out there right now in the <laughs> dating pool. But when you add the added layer of having a disability, there's a lot of other things you have to take into consideration. For me, I know that I might not have the world of a pool to choose from, but the people who I'm going to interact with are open-minded, tend to be more empathetic. Mm -hmm. And in the experiences I've had, you really have to get to know each other first. Mm -hmm. That trust factor has to be there, which is, I think is a lot more different than the transactional relationships a lot of people have. And so, although I haven't found the one, I know that I've had really deep connections with people and I think that is something that's special and I want other people with disabilities to know that they can do it too. Yes, they can, <laughs> they can. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I cannot tell you how grateful we are that you've joined us today. Thank, thank you, you so much. No, thank you. We'll be right back after a short break. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more discussion and debates on everything from food and fashion to pop culture and current events. Don't forget to click like and subscribe.